Coming up, President Kufado takes a swipe at international rating agencies describing their downgrades of sovereign nations as unfair and reckless. Recently had to deal with one of the most difficult periods in its post-independent history. Difficulties which were exacerbated by the reckless behavior of rating agencies that engaged... So coming up, Treasury bill sale falls short of 3.79 billion target as uh, interest rates rise to 28.9 percent. Also ahead in this bulletin, government expected to receive about 6.2 billion dollars from its multilateral partners between 2023 and 2026, as it is at the final stages of debt restructuring. Plus, chairperson of the Global BRICS Business Council, Buzi Mabuza, will be joining us from the Accra International Conference Center, where the 30th Annual General Meeting of the African Exim Bank is underway. We will discuss initiatives to avert a hunger crisis in Africa. My name is Daryl Kwa. Thanks for being with us. Details coming up. My name is Daryl Kwa. Thanks for being with us. First up, President Kufado has criticized international rating agencies for unfairly and recklessly downgrading sovereign nations, particularly Ghana, during the COVID-19 pandemic and Russia's war on Ukraine, a move that has impacted negatively on African economies. According to him, the downgrades of some African economies uh, have completely shut them from accessing the international capital market, which hitherto helped them to raise funds to support their liquidity needs. In a speech to pay tribute to the remarkable contribution of the Africa Export and Egg Import Bank, President Kufuado hinted that a timely support by the Bank of Ghana out of many challenges helped the government sail through. He has been speaking at the ongoing anniversary and annual general meeting of the Afri Exim Bank in Accra. Comfortably and convincingly say this. As the AU champion for African financial institutions, and leader of a country which recently had to deal with one of the most difficult periods in its post-independent history. Difficulties which were exacerbated by the reckless behavior of rating agencies that engaged, <laughs> that engaged in pro-cyclical downgrades, shutting Ghana out of capital markets and turning a liquidity crisis into a solvency crisis. Africa, Afri Exim Bank, under its counter-cyclical response mechanism, provided timely support to help Ghana navigate the macroeconomic management challenges, worsened by Russia's war of aggression in Ukraine in an orderly manner, when suddenly we realized we were alone. The country which had become, quote, the favorite child of bondholders and had successfully gone to market at the height of the pre-COVID-19 downturn was suddenly shut out of international capital markets. It is often said that you know who is truly your friend when you are in trouble, and as rightly stated by Dr. Martin Luther King in that often cited quote, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends, unquote. When you're dealing with powerful international financial institutions, it is important to have your own powerful financial institution. And it is so important and significant that I'm here today, just a few months after that liquidity crisis, hosting the 30th anniversary celebration of Afri Exim Bank. What I have just said about the great relationship between Afri Exim Bank and Ghana, most of my colleagues in this room and across the continent and the Caribbean could say the same thing. And as indicated, we will be going back to the Accra International Conference Center to speak with the chairperson of the BRICS Business Council on 
uh, key partnerships uh, under the act today. You want to hang around for that. But in other news, Treasury bill sale fell short of the 3.79 billion CD ambitious target set by government as interest rates hit 28.9% for the 364-day bill. According to data from the Bank of Ghana, the auction of the short-term securities went down by 771 million CDs. There is more in this report. Government has been borrowing heavily on the money market since the beginning of the year because the market has become the only source of financing. However, it is coming with a higher cost. According to the latest auction results, the government secured 3.018 billion cities from the short-term securities but accepted 3.015 billion cities. The 91-day bill, as usual, received chunk of the bid from the investors, representing about 79 of the total T-bills bids. About 2.398 billion cities were tendered, but the government accepted 2.394 billion cities. For the 182-day bill, a little above 521 million cities were the bids submitted, in which the government accepted all. The same thing happened to the one-year bill as government accepted all the bids worth 99.79 million cities. Meanwhile, interest rates continue to surge. The three-month bill went up by 0.43% to 21.69%, while the 182-day bill also surged to 24.97% from 23.95% the previous week. Join us, Head of Trading at Republic Securities, Patrick Edemagama. Good afternoon to you, Patrick. So explain to us what is happening on the treasury market. Good afternoon, Dara. So what we are seeing is that um, looking at the trend, there is always a higher refinancing need for the government. What we saw last week is that the government is trying to refinance short-term securities, which is a, a, to a, a total of 3.5 billion Ghana cities but they were not able to meet the target and they got only 3 billion Ghana cities. It means in the, in the upcoming uh, week, we should expect the government to be able to raise more, to be able to refinance some of these um, short-term needs. Uh, your anal analysis on uh, the interest rates hikes and what the impact is going to be on the markets going forward? Well, we expect the trend to continue. If you look in the secondary market, you see that there is so much demand for short-term uh, bills than the bonds. So we are looking at 52% uh, for the short-term bill against 48% for the bonds. So we expect this trend to continue. This week, for instance, uh, the need is 2.2 billion. So we expect the government to be able to target that level of um, um, auction. All right, a quick update on the stock market as well. We expect that Cow Bank and Farm Milk will lead the gainers chart this week, right? Yes, there is significant demand for Cow Bank and Farm Milk. Uh, MTN's demand is also mounting. As we are speaking, MTN has gained um, some pesos to close so far as at 1.24. So we expect that to continue. So this is positively impacting the composite index. Last week, we saw it close at 8.28% uh, in terms of year to date. And then for this week, we are expecting MTN and the Transbank Gabia to pay dividends. So there will be liquidity on the market and we expect uh, investors to refund, uh, to get back to the market to buy more. All right, Patrick, it's good to speak with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, also on Zoom with us, economist uh, Professor Lord Mensah, we are going to make sense of of what is happening on the treasury market. Good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us. Before we delve into that, I just want your quick thoughts uh, about this news we just ran uh, this afternoon, our top story. President Kufado addressing the AGM of the Afriexim Bank, blaming international ratings agencies for um, the kind of challenges African economies are facing right now. He's mentioned that before, it didn't go down too well. He's mentioned it again. Your thoughts, quick one. Yeah, I mean, good afternoon to our viewers. You know, um, clearly, I think uh, the president needs to appreciate that the euro bond market is not uh, a sustainable source of financing, you know, a country. I mean, clearly, you cannot rely on borrow to finance your activities. We should also understand that the parameters and the models that are used you know, to come up with a rating has not changed. The only thing that has changed is the circumstances and then the 
um, the, the country-specific problems. So if you look at the global exposures, and then you look at the country-specific problem, put them in the model, whatever comes out is what is interpreted for the consumption of the general investor community, looking at um, in Ghana and then elsewhere. So I think um, blaming the rating agencies won't change anything. Because at the end of the day, um, you are looking at um, same model, and then possibly um, same input that is supposed to generate an output. Whatever happened, you should manage your country to a level where the global shocks will not have much of a problem when it comes to uh, um, um, externalities of that sort. So um, if the country was to be um, a, a country where we, we've managed our economy very well, we have very good buffers, mm. in as much as those global you know, shocks will have impact, it wouldn't have been as much as you know we are experiencing now. So uh, that blame on the, um, uh, the rating agencies, uh, for me, it's, it's uncalled well, meantime, we are keeping our eyes on the treasury market. Um, interest rates going up almost 30%. Explain to our, our audience what is driving the interest rate hikes as we are witnessing. Of course, it has to be with the demand in the short term. The investor community has shortened their you know, horizon of investment. And it's a lesson learned. I mean, the community is being rational. If you look at the, uh, the, uh, the bond restructuring, um, clearly, it tells you that no investor will be interested in a bond as we speak now. And so there's no demand in the long term. That is why you know, the bond rate still remains you know, low. So as we speak now, in the short term frame, I'm talking about below one year, you see an upwards you know, yield curve where the one year is recording higher rate than the 182, than the 91 day. But then you will realize that government is trying to you know, force the, um, the horizon to long term. That is why when you know um, there's a bidding, a government tends to you know um, grab all the uh, 90, uh, 182 and then the uh, one year you know our um, um, bidding. But then the one ninety one they take a fraction of it. In a way, government is trying to tell the investor community that I'm not interested in your short term horizon, but then in long long term. So the pressures, you know, the demand pressures. And then coupled with government demand for money. As we speak now, the treasury bill market has been the only market that government is turning around to sustain you know, the economy. So the investor also knows that, well, government is in need of my money. At the end of the day, if you know, um, you know, the government will, need, will be in need of my money, then I will require higher rates before you know, I extend the money to government. So it's it a push and pull affair. I mean, once the bigger agents you know, who is in demand of my, I'm talking about government here, shows a signal that I always need to be in need of money. There's no way, you know, the rate will come down. So probably let's look at the, uh, the media budget review. Uh, the media budget review may have a bit of change on the interest rate space because I foresee that government is going to restructure, you know, the budget, to, you know, to suit whatever we are going for from the IMF. By so doing, government may not need that much of you know money as you know expected. So that may have some impact on the interest rate structure. But as we speak now, I mean the, the signals are clear. Government is in need of money. The investor is aware of it. The, them providing the money definitely will require higher rate for the provide funds. Uh, well, you, you make mention of uh, uh, media budget. In the long term, how do we deal with this? Uh, more pop cities, uh, manage inflation, exchange rate? Well, so if once you, you, you have an economy where the long term yields are lower than the short term yields, which is an inverted yield curve, it's a depressed economy. We find ourselves in a depressed situation. We may have to, a reform that we've gone for on the IM is somehow going to have impact. The reforms, the government should be able to, you know, stick to all the conditions. Obviously, gradually, uh, demand for short-term funds is going to go down, and then we start looking at long-term. And that is why government is not, you know, taking all the bits on the 91 day, right? To push the investor to the um, um, 182 and then the um, one year, and then by so doing, you can go further beyond the one year. So. It's a gradual process. You know, usually when you have an inverted yield curve, 
it may have to, you know, build up into, you know, uh, an, uh, sorry, a hump shape yield curve where the medium term is going to have higher rates than long and then the short term. And then gradually we have the upward slope in the yield curve, which is the ideal yield curve for an economy that has room to expand because then that upward slope in yield curve, you're going to have, you know, um, rates in the long term being higher than short term. So the investors' appetite will be wet, you know, mm. invest in the long term and by so doing we'll restructure the term structure as we are speaking to now. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Lord Mensa, an economist that joining us with his thoughts uh, on uh, happenings on the treasury market. I appreciate it. Finance Minister Ken of Riata has revealed that government is expected to receive about $6.2 billion from its multilateral partners between 2023 and 2026. Addressing the media Sunday, he said government has come up with Ghana's post-COVID-19 program for economic growth, which is backed by the International Monetary Fund and covers all needed reforms to ensure economic growth. He maintained that government is committed to following through with the reforms and expects a total of $2 billion from multilateral partners by the end of the year. Here's more. Gentlemen, similar reforms are envisaged under the PCPEC to revamp the cocoa sector and reduce and eliminate the annual losses of Cocoa Board and its indebtedness. The reforms in the cocoa sector include the implementation of a turnaround strategy to be approved by Cabinet by end June 2023. This is expected to address cocoa pricing issues, Cocoa Board oversight challenges, introduce cost rationalization measures, and a phase out of quasi fiscal spending. Ladies and gentlemen, other structural reforms to entrench fiscal discipline and bolster transparency include reforms to enhance revenue administration and tax policy, operationalization of the human resource management information system, enhancing spending controls and prevention of arrears buildup, and streamlining of earmark funds. In addition, government is transitioning from central government reporting to general government and from cash to accrual reporting. Our commitment to these reforms is matched by our relentless pursuit of innovation and strengthened partnership. Backed by the renewed drive for reforms, government is working towards securing significant support from our multilateral partners. All together, and including the IMF funds, World Bank, and AFDB support, we expect multilateral support of about $2 billion for 2023 and $6.2 billion between 2023 and 2026. We expect the World Bank to provide a total support of $1.6 billion, while the AFDB provides a total support of $200 million over the program period. The finance minister addressing uh, the press yesterday. Now, there are concerns about Africa's ability to invest significantly in the agri sector and a bid to avert a looming hunger crisis. In West and Central Africa alone, the World Bank is projecting that about 41 million people are at risk of insecurity. In a bid to contain the growing threats to the continent, uh, government uh, and private sector players are gathered in Accra for a three-day conference organized by Africa and Bank as part of its annual general meetings to deliberate on ways to deliver the vision of building prosperity for Africa. Already international, uh, international organizations such as BRICS Global Business Council say they are moving to partner key initiatives such as the Continental Free Trade Area, which will help reverse the continent's high import bill, which stands at $84 billion uh, as of 2022. Uh, joining us on Zoom from the Accra International Conference Center is uh, Busi Mabuza, Chairperson of the Global BRICS Business Council. Good afternoon to you. Uh, hope you're having a good time in Accra so far. Paint a picture for us how seriously Africa is at risk of a hunger crisis, for which reason uh, the BRICS Business Council is looking to invest in the Greek sector. You're muted challenges of our continent and I hope you can hear me now. Yes, I can hear uh, you. Thank you so much. Coming back to the challenges of our continent, um, the fact that we import over $80 billion worth of food produce into the continent and yet we have the vast arable land right here 
we have the rivers that can supply, that can irrigate um, so much of our land, is an absolute travesty. And the African continental uh, free trade Looks like uh, we are having uh, connection challenges with uh, Busi Mabuza, who is joining us from the Accra International Conference Centre, where the 30th Annual General Meeting of the um, Africa and Bank is underway, um, like we indicated. Busi, you're back. Hello, Busi. Thank you so much. I hope you can hear me now. Yeah, I can hear you. Go I ahead. You you're making a now. point. I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Thank you so much. So I was still uh, indicating that with so much arable land, it is absolutely critical that we start producing uh, primary agricultural produce in the continent. We've got the technical expertise down south mm -hmm. where we have large scale commercial farmers and our brick partners are willing and ready to assist us with technology and investment for us to increase agricultural produce in the continent. Right. I was very excited two weeks ago, David posted the Forum for African Agricultural Research, where we were talking up. Obviously, there are challenges with uh, internet connection from the Accra International Conference Center. But yeah, uh, Buzi Mapuza making the point about uh, the arable land we have in Af Africa and the opportunities for the agri sector. Buzi, so tell us about the vision of the agri parks and how important they are to creating prosperity in Africa. Well, I'm told that we've lost the connection to the Accra International Conference Center. Let's. Uh, Move to other stories. Uh, fast forward investment Ghana Limited, the biggest retailer in Ghana, is bringing international brands to the African market. It has announced a partnership with Charles Terwitt to introduce a brand to Ghanaian consumers through a franchise deal. Now, addressing the media at the launch of its new store at the Accra Mall, Chief Executive Officer John Onyogozoro said the move is to enable its loyal customers access a premium men's clothing brand locally. We believe that effortless confidence and style should be easily accessible to every man. And we believe that every outfit starts with a shirt. And every man should own a proper shirt. And here you can see multicolors there, the three tried truths. Uh, again, uh, they stand by this. It's, it's basic uh, to Charles Twight. Truth one is that um, we make British style and quality accessible. So it's not just about the style, it's also about having access to it. The truth two is that we put customer success at the core of everything we do. Uh, so uh, we are customer centric and we ensure that the customer is number one and everything we do is about the customer. And that's why there's a lot of research behind uh, the clothing uh, that we do at Charles Twight. And the truth, truth three is we make everyone feel uplifted and engaged. Again, if you've visited any of our stores, you'll be engaged. You know, is there the ties, is there the accessories, is there the formal shirt, you know, everything, the whole gamut, all makes up a men's fashion. The launch of Charge to White Story, the Accra Mall, Ghana, features complete product categories, ranging from shirts, again, casual and formal, to polos, to knitwear, where you've got jumpers and cardigans, You've got chinos, we've got shoes, formal and casual. We've got suits, we've got ties, and again, accessories, you know, at all levels uh, to complement uh, what we've got. Overall, Fast Forward Investment Ghana Limited, uh, addition of the Charge to Eight franchise in Africa, is great news for shoppers who are looking for high quality, comfortable, premium, and stylish men's clothing. So we're here, it's called Accra Mall. So what is it about Accra Mall that we must know? Accra Mall is a state-of-the-art retail and shopping center in Accra, uh, located in Ghana.
Now, President of the Association of Banks, Ghana Association of Banks, John Ewa, has indicated that a continuous increase in incidence of fraud could reduce the confidence of customers in the banking sector. A recent report by the Bank of Ghana revealed that banks recorded close to 3,000 cases with 188 bank staff involved. Mr. Ewa, however, added that the Associated Association is working assiduously to reduce the menace. Um, as these fraud incidents become more pronounced, and the, the rate of growth perhaps accelerate, um, it has that potential of um, affecting people's confidence in the, the use of these platforms mm -hmm. where these incidents are reported. But the good thing is, uh, you know, a whole lot of the financial services um, transactions flow is moving into the digital arena. So whilst the fraud cases in that area is increasing, we should also be measuring the volume of transactions that are moving onto that platform. So whilst it is, you, you, you cannot justify any fraud event, but it goes with the volumes that go on a certain platform. And as transactions move gradually onto other alternate forms of banking, I don't know the, um, <laughs> the last time you visited your bank and had a face-to-face -face no, interaction. I don't remember. <laughs> yes, so now it, but you are transacting. Yes. yes. So it means... From a mobile app. Of course. Amongst others. So as a lot more people are transiting onto these platforms, you will find that um, the incidents where you are finding people with guns coming to your vault to attack you will go down. Okay. But the incidents on the other end, which is the cyber fraud, will also go up. And that is why, as community of banks, we have deepened our interest in that area. We are working very actively with Bank of Ghana and also with the Cyber Security Authority in building awareness in that area, getting people to understand their responsibilities when they decide to transact on these alternate channels. President of the Ghana Association of Banks uh, speaking on the Pope. And that's the marketplace. Thanks for watching, everyone. More news on our website, myjoyonline.com forward slash business. We will be back same time tomorrow.